everyone, this is Leslie with Color Art. Um, we're going to go through some color mixing, color theory, uh, understanding color uh, more than we ever have. I figured if I spoke to you on camera first, it's it's better than you know looking at my talking hands and you only see my hands while I'm trying to explain stuff on camera. I am the mad scientist behind color art. I have been color mixing for 23 years. Uh, and I didn't realize how rare of a, a bird I was until a few years ago, knowing that these bigger companies, they're using, uh, um, there's a computer that can mix 2.1 million colors, minimal, out of the three, yellow, red, and blue yellow red and blue and because I have been mixing my paints using uh, various degrees of coated micas minerals and ground metals uh, I recently found out after all these years that those have to actually be benched out that's not something a computer can do the machine that can read the light waves that you can go in and color match uh, how much red, yellow, and blue makes, say, that John Deere green that you want to color match. Uh, the That machine doesn't read Michael Light Waves. I didn't know that. So uh, that just happened to be me. I'm a small company. We make everything by hand. I've designed and benched out all the colors myself. And here we are 20-something years later. And I, to my knowledge, I'm one of the few people, if not one of the only companies out there, that actually make a dry paint system. Yes, I said dry paint. Unheard of. Normally it's a liquid. Uh, it first started with the primary elements, which are a water-soluble, meaning it, it will mix in, in any kind of medium that cleans up with soap and water. You can put it in gum arabic. You can put it in water-based polyurethane. You can put it in varnish. You can put it in acrylic medium. Uh, very different than pouring medium. We'll get to that in another segment, but uh, you want to put them in a high polymer medium to make an acrylic paint. Um, and then we also recently uh, found this fantastic acrylic enamel that is so beautiful and it paints on other surfaces besides your typical canvas and paper. It also goes on glass and metal. So uh, we incorporated it on in our line. You can buy the Vivid Ultra Metallics pre-mixed with color, or you can get the primary element dry pigments and the medium separately and mix it yourself. A little less expensive, and for paint pouring people who are already mixing, they don't mind. For the general consumer that says, hey, I don't want to mess with mixing, we have mixed the Vivid together. But this kind of all stemmed with this primary element line. And recently, uh, July 2018, a uh, fantastic customer reached out to me and said, why are you not making something for resin? I'm like, why should I? I'm a green girl. I, I, I don't want to mess with toxic materials. And she's like, yeah, but if you know Art Resin and Stone Coat, these companies that actually produce the resin, they're getting more and more green every day. She says, now there's nobody in the United States actually making a specific paint for artists for resin. I'm like, okay. So she asked me to kind of take a look at what other companies were doing. And my first answer back was, I don't want to mess with anything that has to clean up with turpentine. It's a, uh, that's just something I'd like to avoid. I don't want to expose my customers to it. I don't want to expose my employees to it. And so it started this journey of, could I produce a similar dry paint system as the primary elements that go into anything water soluble, that clean you can clean up your brush with soap and water, for resin? And... After a few months worth of work, I can't believe uh, how quickly I managed to get to the bottom of it. We now have launched a line a few months ago called Resin Art, R-E-Z-I-N-A-R-T-E. 
and uh, the luster pigments were the first ones. Yes, we use mica, ground minerals, metals as the base, but real color's been added to them. There's still this question out there in the marketplace. They're pretty on camera, but aren't Leslie's pigments just mica powders? No, 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 they're not. There's mica powder in them. Um, we do have a third category for all these years we've been selling the primary element water soluble line. Um, and so it was just a natural packaging to put uh, what I call artist pigments, the other colors you need in your toolbox, your interferences, your iron oxides, your gold, copper, bronzes. We have put those also in the primary element packaging because everything we sold was water soluble. We recently rebranded under the name Blingit. Uh, the new labeling and package will be here, packaging will be here soon. So you'll actually see some product differentiation and it won't confuse people. They'll know that primary elements is for water soluble. You'll know the bling it, it's just beautiful micas, artist micas, Any anybody use. Scrapbookers can use it, rubber stampers can use it, fine artists can use it, resin artists can use it, and then of course the resin art product. Um, our most recent release was the tints. The challenge was I wanted to be able to use those beautiful matte transparent colors that I see other companies uh, offering, but it comes in a liquid. And for me as a product developer, I know as soon as you put something in a liquid, your shelf life just starts ticking. Tick, 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 the time starts ticking. So the challenge was how do I do this in a dry? Well, you would think it would be the same, but what am I gonna put it in if I'm not gonna put it in a mica that's all shimmery, right? So I did this piece. Um, <clears throat> it's the stucco pass piece. It's up here on my YouTube channel, and it's all red. And when we got the colors down, I went, oh, I'll mix up this red raspberry. Been fooling around with these, these tints. Mixed it up, poured it over the colors. Beautiful. I'm like, wow, okay, I'll make 12 colors. 12 colors will be nice. We've got a nice turmeric, like a curry color, a deep cobalt blue, which will look beautiful with all those beautiful ocean blues, uh, a Caribbean sea, which is a darker green teal, uh, the viola, which is a periwinkle, red raspberry, hibiscus, Bahama Matma blue. We've got some nice colors. So... I'm prepared to do the um, tile test. I usually do a tile test when I release something new in the resin to kind of show in the clear light of day, stone cold clear light of day, exactly what it should look like on white. And I saw these little microscopic freckles of color, random, on the white tile that weren't dissolving so fast. They eventually break down is the resin's curing, but so I thought, okay, I was surprised, surprised I wasn't prepared for this. So what we have determined, okay, is that mineral, it has to be able to go transparent in resin. So it was a special mineral that we used, hugs that color a little bit, and you actually have to mix it. And we're meaning we're so spoiled with the resin art just slipping into the resin like butter, literally going into the resin like butter, uh, how were we going to handle these tints? So if you make gravy, then you know when you're mixing butter and flour together, you make a roux. If you've made cookies, you know you're creaming your butter and sugar together. So think of the same thing. It's easier to mix something in a smaller amount of liquid than the whole entire jar of liquid. So <clears throat> take a little bit of your powder, a dollop of the resin, mix it into a paste, add the balance of your resin to it. You should be okay, but mixing in a paste 15 seconds still seem like a long time. I mean, I mix my resin for three minutes. How is it that 15 seconds feels so long, but you're like one, 1,000, two, 1,000. Once I get to four, 1,000, I'm like, what? So I found another option to speed things up. A drop of 99% alcohol releases that mineral, okay? Now, um, two videos are coming up. One will be using the tint over some ocean wave colors, and I'll be doing the bling it drop t droplet technique. But in the other one, I was experimenting with 
making some alcohol ink effects with the resin art tints. I mean, if resin cleans up with alcohol, and that means it's technically alcohol soluble, meaning you can clean up your stuff with alcohol, it made sense that if I use some 99% alcohol and the tints, hey, would it work? And indeed it did. Um, I'm not an expert at alcohol inks. I have a lot to learn. I immediately went scrambling as I mixed them to go look up. Sharon Lindley did a beautiful video with an airbrush, Miriam's Nature. She's the bomb diggity when it comes to learning about alcohol inks. I just went to check out as many videos as I could so I could gain a little confidence the next time I play with them. But this video that I'm presenting to you guys today, it's just short, sweet, how I mixed them, that mineral will settle on the bottom. And it, 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 when I was first experimenting, I'm like, is the color not mixing? It was the mineral hanging on the spoon. And I realized when I was pouring them off, hey, let that mineral settle like a little sediment. You already got the color off of it. Pour it off in a little bottle. And now I've got some alcohol links. I did a second experiment of dropping them in the resin. They are pretty strong. Uh, but so less is more. Um, and according to Miriam's Nature, alcohol inks actually have propylene glycol in them. So if I was to really fine tune these, I might add a few more drops of propylene glycol to my mix so they behave a little bit more like an alcohol ink. But I got some really great effects dropping them in the resin, but then pushing the resin over the top of my piece uh, with a heat gun over the areas that had the alcohol ink and it's smoothed right over and no pits. I hope you enjoy these coming videos. Um, in the next segment when I get on live, we're going to start talking about color and color theory. But I just thought it was time to introduce myself to y'all. And uh, once again, nice to meet you and you have a good day. Bye. Okay, so we're going to mix uh, the clear cobalt tint. I did a short video a little while ago on this, but didn't really go into detail. The tint is a matte but transparent color you can use over other colors. You could actually mix it with some of our uh, large sparkling mica and get a transparent with little glints of color going through it. It can be mixed with interference to make a pastel. Um, but first I want to just mix it up as if it was going to be a straight tint. And what I discovered the best way to mix it is put a little bit of your resin on the bottom. Take the pigment. This little serving taster spoon is an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm liking it kind of concentrated, so I'm putting about a scoop and a half in here. And the dollop is so I can mix it in a paste. I want to mix this in a paste first. It's easier to break something down in a smaller amount of liquid than it is to pour all the liquid in, and then you're sitting there trying to beat it up. Nobody's ever really made a dry tint for the resin business or resin art. This is our first attempt at these things. I really like them. But the mineral that we mixed it in seems to hug the color a little bit. So you actually have to break it down and mix it. There is a quick way to guarantee that it's going to release at this point. I've been putting one drop of 99% alcohol in it. So I'm going to put just one drop. And that just, I know that's going to speed it. I'm breaking down. Then I'm going to put the rest of the resin I plan on using in here. About an ounce. I put this in the clear cups. You can see it. I like using paper cups. I had someone recently recommend some nice silicone cups I'm going to look at. I mean, paper is not bad for the environment. But we like to use clear on camera, so you can see how something looks. This is a very, very, very dark blue, but it'll be transparent. 
in the piece that we're doing. Okay, so the balance of this video I've sped up a little bit and we're going to do quick voiceover so we can save some time. I'm working on a 10 by 14 tile and I'm going to lubricate the base with some clear resin so my colors move a little bit easier. You don't really need much. I'm just putting a real thin coat on. And also when you're working on tile, uh, tile heats up quick. So it doesn't take much to get your surface lubricated when you're working on tile. All I'm doing is gently warming up the clear. So the first color I'm putting down is the Surf's Up Blue at full saturation. And that next color that looks white is some interference green mixed in clear. And I'm blowing that surfs up to the top edge over the clear because I want a real lot of transparency on the surfs up. That dark is the tint and I decided that clear cobalt tint, I decided at this point uh, to not really add more of the tint until I got the rest of my colors laid down. This color that looks green is the aquamarine. It's a green teal. And all I'm doing is kind of warming the colors so they kind of kiss one another. More surfs up. Now this is a custom mix I made. It was an experiment. That darker kind of blue that was a little bit of the clear cobalt tint was some of the bling it violet in there. I didn't really use it anywhere but right there but I just kind of wanted to see what would happen and it did add a little sparkle at the end. Some more interference green and clear. You can see how it went over the surfs up beneath it and we get that really pretty, pretty light turquoise there. More aquamarine. And I'm blowing the interference green over that aquamarine. Just so they talk to one another. Now this is some of that Surf's Up Blue mixed with some Interference Blue. I made a lighter shade of the blue with an extra bit of that blue sparkle. And I realized I needed to break up where that purple and blue was so I put some more of the Interference Green there. and on the base, which I haven't heated up yet, but on that other end also. That's some of the straight Surf's Up Blue. And I'm kind of pointing out in the video, I'm getting some lacing over that interference green. Now we're adding the clear cobalt tint. just blowing it slightly, letting it stain that color below, just slightly. And we're 
We're going to move that around a little bit. If you notice, I'm getting these little glints that look like violet there coming out of the cobalt in. That's just the deepest, darkest blue on Earth. But it's interesting how it's reacting to that interference green. Here's a close-up. See what looks like these little uh, almost watercolor effects in there, how it's reacting. I love that lacing over the interference green. Okay, so now it's time to add the blingets. And this is the blingit sparkle gold, the big chunky gold mixed in the resin. You really need to only use half as much as you would of the regular luster pigments. You're, you're good if you use half of an eighth of a teaspoon to an ounce. Stuff's pretty strong. And I've decided in this piece I'm going to make uneven shapes, not all perfect little round marbles. And we're going to continue on with more of the bling at gold, kind of keep my pattern going all the way down. Okay, so now I have some of the interference green with just a drop of that surf sep in it. It may be hard to see on this camera, but it's giving me a minty aqua color. And because it's interference, it's more milky. It's not quite as transparent as that bling at gold. It looks more white. You're getting more dimension. It's real interesting when you put them on top of other colors they begin to layer so the first one the first shapes that you put down will be covered up by the second shapes that you lay down so now it looks like i'm adding a little bit more of the bling of gold on top of those aquas and here is where i begin to experiment with the purple sapphire i did one drop and I'm dropping some of the bling at gold. I find that putting gold on top of warmer tones, like reds or this purple sapphire, because it's red violet, really makes it pop. So I'm putting more of the purple sapphire droplets down. I love these little pipettes. In my first earlier videos when I tried this technique, I kept trying to do it with a spoon and it was sloppy. The little pipettes are about a hundred to a sack and I think they were like nine or ten dollars and they're worth their weight in gold. You just kind of cut off that tiny little tip and it'll draw up the resin perfectly for you to do this kind of detail work. We're really getting some interesting different shapes and color in here as it's reacting as the droplets are reacting to the colors surrounding them. And I just find it very interesting that that clear cobalt is hugging the color. In hindsight, I wish I'd gone a little bit further, kind of covered it up even more, but this is such a fun technique. It's very rewarding to do. Okay, so now here comes some aquamarine droplets. I thought, okay, I can put a drop down and another drop inside of it. Now, 
here I got into a little bit of trouble. The first ones I put down, I put the bling of gold on top because that it's semi-transparent. Those chunks are real big. Uh, it, they look like they fit, but here in a minute, you're going to see me experiment with some interference green. And because the interference is more milky, it appears very, very white in the camera. I know it's coming up here soon. Here we go. I think this is where I put that white on. It looks white and that's actually interference screen. It eventually went transparent but I felt like I needed to fix it a little bit later on because it with everything else surrounding it, it kind of looked a little bit too stark like it didn't belong. I tried to put some transparent clear on top and <clears throat> the clear with the gold, the bling of gold and then take my um, little tip and kind of mix the color in there so it's not so stark and that helped a little bit. But this one is kind of glaring at me, that one that looks so white dead center. So I tried to fix it with a little bit of the purple sapphire just to kind of give it some more break that up, that big old white spot in the middle. I think this is some of that gold on top because we know that's going to react nicely. And I warmed it just slightly. One thing you don't want to do is once you get your droplets down, you're not going to cook them. So the warming pretty much needs to end except that one little spot. Okay, here is the close up. See how beautiful that dark cobalt is and it's transparent and not shimmery next to our sparkling colors. I love the pop of color that the sapphire gave us, that purple sapphire. And I know the camera's not doing it justice, but all those areas that look white, that's all that interference green and the aqua that it mixed where they layered on top of one another. I love this technique. Stay tuned for part two. See you soon. If you'd enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share. Thank you.
Curry's not bad for being mild, but we like to use clear on camera so you can see how something, which is a very, very, very dark blue, but it'll be transparent. 